Hi, our next speaker, uh, Vafa Kaligi, uh, will talk about uh, Persian typesetting, uh, past, present, and future. You have the floor. Thank you. I'm just trying to share my screen, so please bear with me. I see that you are very close to me. I am? Yes, by the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> Can you see my screen now? Not yet. Not yet. yet. Yes, we can see it now. Okay, good. Uh, I, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to talk about my tech talk here. Um, so I'm, this is actually a soft talk, it's not too technical. And uh, I was hoping that my the other talk, which is, is about the video package, I was hoping that I would be giving that talk first and this one next, but I had to uh, change a lot of things. So I had to cut down a, a fair amount of material, but I hope that's going to be okay. And if you're wondering about this logo, this actually is the logo of the package. And uh, uh, it actually symbolizes the Sassanid kingdom, which ruled Iran about 2000 years ago. So I just want to give an overview of what I'm going to do today. I'll first talk about Persian type setting and what I mean by Persian type setting and its requirements. Then I'll talk about the tech-based solutions. Then we will talk about the C Persian package and its history. Then we will see the main features of the Z Persian package. We will also look at the challenges that we faced in the development of the C Persian package due to the engine that it uses. We also compare it with other tech-based packages and type setting systems. I will also tell you where the Z version package is used and what is used for. I will show you some examples. And uh, we will also finally look at the current state of the package and plans for future development. So what I mean by Persian typesetting is that I want to typeset a document which is mainly written right to left. It's not just that I want to typeset a short piece of text in Persian, but an entire document in Persian. Uh, you should be able to typeset Latin text in line in Persian mode. You should also have the ability to write paragraph in left right mode and also write Persian text in line and in paragraph mode inside Latin mode. So it's actually a mixture of those two modes. The font also should be changed automatically in Persian and Latin modes. The digits in text and math mode should appear in Persian and the user should have the ability to change and switch between Persian and Latin digits in math mode. The indexes, glossaries, et cetera, should be sorted using Persian alphabets. Uh, we want to be able to typeset footnotes, of course. The Persian footnotes should appear from right to left and the Latin footnotes should appear from left to right. And we also need to have automatic footnote rule. So if the first footnote on a page is a Persian one, the footnote rule on that page should appear right to left. And if it's Latin, it should be left to right. We should also be able to typeset the current date in Iranian calendar. For example, if you're using the control sequence today, you should be able to have the current date of today in Iranian calendar. You can also use a lot of drawing packages like ticks and PSRX, and you want to be able to uh, typeset the labels in Persian. Uh, you want to typeset the tables in Persian and from right to left. 
You should be able to choose the font for typesetting main Persian text, Latin text, digit in text, and math modes. Uh, the package should provide various counters in Persian and the components of the different parts of your documents should have Persian labels like uh, table of contents. And the decimal suppressor in math mode should appear in Persian. And most importantly, the package should be compatible with almost all commonly used packages. So for example, if you want to use a multi-call, you should be able to use it for Persian type setting. And these are not all the requirements. I just listed the very uh, main ones that I need to concentrate on. Okay, so now let's look at some local tech-based solutions. Uh, we have Riyaz in Negar, which is translated literally as Math Writer. It was developed by Masumia in 1991, and it's based on LaTeX 2.09. We also had Teke Parsi developed by Dada Kavi Iran company and Ahmad Yazipur. In the same year, uh, we had Farsi Tech, which was a product of the engineering, software engineering students at Sharif University of Technology. We had Iran Tech developed by Moghaddam and Shojais in 2006. And finally, the Persian was initially developed by Mustafa Wahedi and Mehdi Omidali, and later. I took the development in 2008, uh, and I will talk about this in a bit. Uh, it's actively maintained. It's based on the current LaTeX version, works under ZTech. It supports almost all commonly used packages and offers a rich set of features. It supports around um, 120 mostly used packages. Those two tech systems that had a lot of influence on Z Persian are Tech Parsi and Farsi Tech. And if we've been using components from both of these both of these typesetting systems and packages. What I want to convey is that uh, we are building on the work of other people that have already worked on this area. And the end result is not just the product of one person, a lot of people. Uh, contributed to the package. Uh, what is under development is a package Persian law tech. It's not actually a package by the format. What it does is that it loads the LaTeX format under the law tech engine. Then it does some changes to LaTeX. It uh, actually modifies use packages and uh, loading class files. So whenever it, a package is used, the patches from the Persian LaTeX package is loaded. Uh, there are also other packages like Arabi, ArabTech, ArabZTech, Polyglossia, Babel, et cetera, and other formats like Context that allows you to type the Persian, but they're not at the level of uh, local solutions. By that, I mean that they are not heavily tested, uh, they are not um, as stable enough, and they are not used actually for practical use. Uh, it took Z Persian about 10 years to become widely used. And uh, this talk is primarily about Z Persian package. So we want to talk about the history of Z Persian. In 2007, a friend of mine, Mustafa Bahedi, published an elementary set of micros based on Arab Z tech. Uh, under the file Farsi ZTech, and it was published on his blog, which I put the address there. Uh, it's actually exists for historical reasons. Uh, then later Mehdi Omid Ali uh, developed the same file further, but it was also using Arab ZTech package. Uh, and the, the draft version of the not so short introduction to LaTeX was typeset by that same file. I took over the development in 2008. I removed the use of the Arab ZTech package entirely and published the resulting package under the name Z Persian on CTA. Uh, final version of Omid Ali's translation of the not so short introduction to LaTeX was typeset by the Z Persian package. In fact, uh, several other updates of the translation have been using the Z Persian package. 
Uh, the package is actively maintained uh, since 2008, except a short period of time, which due to health complication, I asked uh, David and the LaTeX team to uh, maintain it, and they kindly and generously accepted, uh, and I'm grateful to each of those people. Okay, so let's look at what Z Persian is. Um, if you don't know uh, what Z Persian is, or you haven't ex you haven't done any sort of Persian typesetting, uh, it's a package for typesetting Persian documents in LaTeX. It is powered by the BD package. Actually, the BD package powers a lot of other packages, which I'm going to talk about that package tomorrow as well. Uh, it allows, as I said, it allows you to use more than 100 commonly used packages and classes. Uh, I'm not a user of the package, I'm a plain tech user. Uh, the package uh, should, be, should be loaded last because it actually patches a lot of packages, so we need to make sure that it's the last loaded package. Uh, my role as a developer is that I receive bug reports, I fix them, I answer user questions, and then release the new versions on CTAM. The Z version package is widely used in Iran and elsewhere for typesetting documents. Um, it's not a perfect solution, so I'm not going to complain to claim that it's the perfect solution, but actually it does the job uh, and people can typeset their documents. What drives development is the need of the Persian tech community, so they ask for features or they ask for uh, certain bugs to be fixed, and then th that's what uh, makes the development going on. So the basic usage of the package is quite easy. You just load a LaTeX document ju just uh, you have. The only difference is that you have to load the package Z Persian with its options, uh, which is optional, and then the only compulsory control sequence that you need to use is the control sequence set text font. This allows you to actually use the font for the main Persian text. So to get a PDF, you run ZLaTeX on the tech file and you get your PDF. So I want to talk about some of the main features. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to talk about all the features because that, that quite takes a lot of time. Uh, I want first to talk about typesetting digits. So when you typeset digits, you actually want to typeset the digits in text mode. You want to choose the font and the control sequence set text digit font allows you to choose the font for the digits in text mode. The font of the digits in math both uh, can be typeset by set math digit font. And if you want to typeset both uh, digits in text and math mode by one control sequence, you can use set digit font. There are also options for switching between Persian and Latin digits in inline and display math modes. Uh, uh, there are both options and uh, control sequences. I'm just basically going to talk about the uh, options. So there are three options. There is math digits, inline math digits, and display math digits. And each of these has three values, automatic, default, Persian. Uh, inline math digits means that we want to typeset digits in the inline math mode, display math mode for display math mode, and math digits means both in inline and display math mode. So when we say automatic, we should have Persian digits in Persian mode and Latin digits in Latin mode. Default, uh, which means we should have Latin digits everywhere and Persian means Persian everywhere. If a font is not chosen for the digits in math mode, then uh, Latin mother fonts will be used to typeset, and in text mode, the current font is used. Now, the, the package also provides some global font size and baseline escape. Uh, the option math font size scale allows you to scale the font size scale of the document. So for example, if you want to uh, scale the math font in your document by a factor of two, you just give an integer of two to this uh, option. You, you can also use the font size scale, which scales the uh, font size 
in text mode and in math mode. You can also use the, control, uh, the option font size. It actually accepts two arguments. One of them is the font size and the other one is the baseline scheme. The Latin font size scale can be changed by the option Latin font size scale. Sometimes you want to be able to have different uh, font sizes in Persian mode and Latin mode. That's why this option exists. And also there is in LASIK, there's a baseline stretch command that you can actually redefine. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just this option baseline skip is just a wrapper for baseline stretch. And there's also Latin baseline skip scale, which changes the baseline skip in Latin mode. Uh, finally, there's also an option called compute auto ilk, which calculates a suitable baseline skip. What it does, it actually tests the current font with some characters. And if the height plus depth of any character is greater than the baseline skip, then it changes the baseline skip to that height plus the depth, so there's no problem. We also have localized the package, so you can use a lot of control sequences in Persian as well as in English. Most of the commonly used commands are localized. All of the tech primitives are localized, so you can actually uh, program in tech. Uh, some commonly used environments are localized. We had to take a special care in localizing the verbatim environment and uh, the verbatim package, which also provides another variant of the verbatim environment. Uh, this feature is not on by default. So if you want to use this, you have to use the localize option. Um, tech messages cannot be localized. Uh, for that, we need to actually modify the engine, which is not possible at a micro level, but we can modify and translate LaTeX messages, but this hasn't been done yet. Uh, some color names uh, provided by the color and X color packages are also localized, like gray, yellow, red, etc. And when we implement the localized option, we have to make the uh, ZWNG, which stands for zero width non-joiner um, as a letter. So we have to give it category 11 because we want to use it um, as part of a control sequence in Persian. For indexes, glossaries, and bibliography, for indexes and glossaries, we use Zindi. There are three variants for Persian in Zindi, variant one, variant two, and variant three. Uh, these are basically the same thing, but they are different based on the very first letter of the Persian alphabet. Uh, these three variants also allows uh, sorting using English alphabet. Um, there are also packages for BibTeX. There is Persian Bib package by Mahmoud Amitusi and the Alpha Persian by Shapur Maladpur. Sadly, BibLatex is not yet supported. Okay, so let's talk about the challenges that we faced and we still face. Z Persian is based on ZTech, which is based on ETech, which is based on the bidirectional model of tech Z. This means a number of issues and limitation. What seats are reversed as a result, a special pairs are reversed. So that means that the color actually can go wrong. Uh, we can somehow fix some of these and actually the BD package tries its best to fix some of these, but this fix is actually very limited. For example, you can only fix the color uh, if the color stays on one line. If it breaks um, on several lines, then the color goes wrong. The same thing um, also is true for Hyper-F uh, drawing packages and any other thing that uses a special in a way or another. Um, the author of ETEC, Peter, uh, was really willing. So when I talked to him about these issues, he was willing to fix it. And I actually tried to fix it, but uh, uh, it's very sad that he passed away. Um, so um, also there is no primitive for changing the direction of H aligned. So the only trick that we have to use 
is that we have to put HL line or tabula in LaTeX uh, inside an H box and surround that H box by the primitive begin R and NR. That's the only way that we can make a HL line and tables right to left. And this also has another side effect. So what it does, it does reverse a lot of things. It reverses indentation. It reverses uh, the ragged right and ragged left. So a lot of care needs to be taken in that area as well. Also, this complicates uh, a lot of things for typesetting line tables, like, like the package line table, because there is no primitive for typesetting tables right to left. And because of the limitations of TechSeed, a lot of patch patches is needed. So in TechSeed, we only have four primitives. There are four primitives for typesetting right to left documents. There is begin L and L, there's begin R and NR. And there's also another one for typesetting the equation number based on the direction of the document. I think it's called a uh, pre-display direction, which accepts an integer. So let's talk about who does use the Z version package. The Z version package is used widely in Iranian universities for typesetting thesis books. It is also used by Iranian Mathematical Society for its various publications. Uh, any annual Iranian mathematics conferences requires paper submission to be in Z-Persian format. Several Iranian universities offer courses in mathematical writing, and they use the Z-Persian package to actually teach the mathematical writing courses. Each university has developed a class for typesetting thesis by the specifications of their university. And a lot of publishers also use Z Persian for typesetting books. It's also used in Afghanistan, which they speak the same language as us. It used in Kurdistan, uh, by Kurdistan, I mean the Kurdistan in Iraq uh, and some other places, but they use some modifications. Although in Tajikistan, they speak the same language as us, uh, they, they don't use the Arabic script, they use Krillic script, so therefore they cannot use this package. So finally, I want to show you some example documents that are typeset by Z Persian. So I basically took this example from the tech book. I think this uh, appears somewhere in the textbook, but it's the other way around. So instead of right, instead of left, you have this thing on the left, uh, and I just replace some text. Okay. Uh, this is a table which is typeset from right to left with some mathematics in it. As you can see, the digits in math mode appear in Persian mode. And this is the caption of the table. And everything needs to be typeset right to left, except math, which needs to be typeset from left to right. Uh, in this example, we just uh, used the first letter uh, this, this is used in English, but not a lot used in Persian, but I thought that I, I would just demonstrate how this is used using the Z Persian package. This is another example using the PS3 package uh, for calculating the volumes. So this means R out and this is R in. Okay, uh, this is another example where the um, caption of the figure is actually typeset in the margin. This is based on a modification of the Tofte package, uh, which is developed under BD Tofte with a lot of modifications. This is another example of a table in color using the color TBL package. This is, this is done using the same package. 
I, an example of typesetting matrices. This basically is a 12 by five matrix and all the digits are in Persian. So this is a textbook for typesetting a theorem. And this is also taken uh, from MFEC package, which we typeset mat. This is done using ticks uh, for typesetting text inside boxes. And uh, because the Persian package modifies and supports a lot of packages, you can actually use a lot of packages to typeset anything you like. Uh, this example is also taken from the ticks package. It um, tells you the different areas of computer science. The Z Persian package, why the BD package also allows you to typeset foot, footnotes in paragraph mode. So this footnote is actually typeset in mini page and the footnotes are in paragraph mode. It also allows you to typeset footnotes in multi columns. So the footnote at the bottom is typeset in four columns. I think that's all that I wanted to talk about. Thank you so much. Rafa, I have a question. Do you have a second or so? Sorry. Yes, I do. I have a question. Uh, it, it, it's completely from a layman. I, I, know, I, I know exactly nothing about uh, typesetting in Persian. Um, are you able, is it, a, is it a, a custom to do a, sort of a full book in Nastalik or not? A full book in? Nastalik in Persian calligraphy? Okay, I think um, I basically moved out of Iran when I was a teenager. So um, to, to tell you the truth, um, if I want to answer your question, my answer wouldn't be very authentic. I'm just going to tell you what I think. Um, so it might not be the case. But what I think is that Nasali is actually used for typesetting, mostly for typesetting poems. And it's not used uh, to typeset the, the an entire book with, uh -huh. with, with with that font, but it's used a lot in handwriting. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for a wonderful talk. Uh, All right. Absolutely. Thank you so much.